the future will look to those that have fought and lost their lives and those that have survived after serving in order to preserve the nation. Despite the outcome, all veterans have risked the ultimate sacrifice for the good of the people in their country. This voluntary act of patriotism cannot go without notice and it will pave the way for the future of the nation as a whole. One day it is hoped that liberty and peace will go hand in hand. But until that day comes, Americans will continue to fight for freedom. If the future citizens of America share the spirit that has been present throughout time, nothing will be impossible for the nation to achieve, and the veterans that have fought will live on in this country's soul. Veterans represent what, what every American should strive to be. If not every day, at least every morning in school and at every sports game when the national anthem plays, the men and women who have volunteered to fight for freedom should be remembered. Patriotism can be shown in different ways for different people, but it is important for every individual to show his or her own American pride in order to honor those that protect the rights granted in this country. It is impossible to show the importance of these heroes to one day. All the days of the year can be devoted to the veterans, and still it will not be enough to express the gratitude of them. Not one group of people has impacted the course of America the way the veterans have. To be American is to be brave, free, and equal, and veterans symbolize the struggle it has been to guarantee these rights everyone deserves. By looking to the veterans of America, the spirit this nation was founded on will live on and stand the test of time. Veterans fight to ensure that they are leaving the nation with the ability to continue to be the land of freedom. They walk among us as common civilians. They live their lives for common purpose, to represent emblems for the common good. However, these select few men and women are instilled with characteristics uncommon to the general population. The call of duty had appeared before them, and without reluctance, a swift answer was reciprocated. With hearts abound with bravery and an unmatched strength fit for the task, our veterans have granted this nation an enormous contribution. For the sake of their fellow countrymen, they have offered up the most vital gift one can be given to secure freedom here at home. For centuries, these valiant protectors of liberty have stood firm in their salute. With America eternally in their debt, the veterans of this nation have proven invaluable to who we are as a country and what we stand for as a society. Throughout the lifespan of the United States, the rightful accolade of these noble souls by the public has elevated their members to positions of great influence. By no means a coincidence, America's most distinguished leaders are those who have weathered the scorn of the battlefield. In observing Emanuel Lutz's portrait of General Washington crossing the Delaware, one can sense a tide of adulation surrounding U.S. military service. It is for this reason that the indispensable veteran to the War of Independence was unanimously voted into office. This trend stubbornly persists across subsequent generations. Iconic figures of the American military have consistently risen to help guide the direction of the United States. Whether they have been politically inclined or simply militarily skillful, the insight of combat experience men and women have unquestionably molded American national identity while simultaneously protecting its way of life. Sitting atop a wealth of memories and understanding, these fighters for freedom act as a crucial reminder of the nation's past and current conflicts. Veterans bless U.S. citizens with stories of their heroic service and supply the general public with unobstructed patriotism. In times when national morale seems to dwindle, those courageous few who have profoundly defended the stars and stripes dissolve any lack of confidences in American strength. The hands that have upheld the wall of democracy against defending enemies in years past are the hands that point toward the future. With their continued service, this fortified barrier will persist in its impenetrability and allow succeeding generations the freedoms and the liberties that the people of the United States enjoy today. Thank you. At this time, I would like to introduce Ms. Lisa Downey. Ms. Downey is a veteran of the U.S. Air Force. She has recently been appointed to, as the Veterans Service Officer for the Town of Tuxbury. Please welcome Ms. Downey. Thank you. to serve my country and it's an honor now to have the opportunity to assist veterans and their dependents. My military service was more satisfying thanks to those like my father, my sister, and the many other veterans across the armed forces who served before me. I'm proud that our society values the service of those in uniform today and honors those who made the ultimate sacrifice. I would like to have our veterans in attendance today introduce themselves and state their branch of years of service.
assigned to the Special Operations Command. I like to commit you late the uh, thing about joining the military. In 1977, August 31st, I joined the military right out of high school. Last year in June, I retired. 36 years of service in this great country of ours. Who I hope is all keeping your prayers because all the veterans, acting in reserve, national guards are still out there in, our, in harm's way, protecting this great nation. Some are in Afghanistan, some are in, still in Iraq, and a lot of special operations, other places around the world that is usually not heard of doing the job protect our nation and other nations that require our help. Of 
some of those honorable, brave people right here. I'm very proud to be sitting among them today. So now we know what a veteran is. And they serve. So what is service, really? It's an act of helpful activity, employment in any duties, or work for a person, organization, or government. Or it pertains to the armed forces of the country. And then armistice. We're going to talk about that for just a minute or two. What is an armistice? Temporary suspension of hostilities by agreement of the warring parties or a truce. Okay, so now we know what basic terms are. So the history, a little bit behind this, for those of you that have not heard this before, because there probably are a few of you out there. So November 11th in 1918, there was an armistice, armistice that was signed between Germany and the Allies. This armistice stopped the fighting and eventually led to the end of World War I, right? So, you get President Woodrow Wilson who proclaims November 11th as Armistice Day, he does that the following year. Now, after that, well, they really didn't celebrate it a whole lot. Mostly what happened is uh, around that time, you get a, you know, maybe a minute of silence at 11 o'clock, because they did sign it at 11 o'clock, 11th hour, and the 11th day, the 11th month. So that's why we try to celebrate it in the spirit of that tradition. So in 1938, Armistice Day becomes a federal holiday. So now you actually get to take the day and recognize the service of the people that had fought. 1954, President Eisenhower signs a bill that officially changes Armistice Day to Veterans Day. What he wanted to do was include everybody that had fought in wars previous. So it's not just about the armistice, it's about the people that have served in the military. All right? So now a few fun facts, because there's not too much more history to that. All right, so we've got about 19 to 22 million veterans that are living in the United States today. That's a lot of people. But when you think about it in terms of the population of the United States, less than 1%, it's a very few amount of people that actually serve in the, in the United States military. But they are a very courageous and elite group of human beings. People that would stand between you and harm's way, I, I give that any day. They're, they're amazing people. 1.6 million of those people are female veterans. Now, a lot of that is in, in the more, more recent history, the past 50 to 60 years. You really didn't see a lot of females that served in World War I, Revolutionary War. You did see a lot of like, nurses, things like that, but still, the majority of female veterans happened in more of our recent history. Also, 9.3 million of those veterans are over the age of 65. So what does that tell you? We've got a lot of younger veterans from some of our more recent conflicts and wars, right? So why is it important that we take time out, take the entire day, close offices, close you know, services, take a day out of school? Why do we think about this? A veteran is somebody that has signed up to serve their country in whatever branch of the military they're in. They do this selflessly. They don't do it thinking, well, oh, geez, you know, I really kind of want to sleep in these next six weeks in basic training. But that's not what it's about. You join the military to serve. And that's one of the bottom lines. Now that service, it may not be pleasant. I'm sure any number of these folks over here have some incredible stories to tell, if they want. Some might, some might not. But the fact is, is it's not always pleasant in the military. I mean, that's almost kind of goes without saying. Although I myself have never had to spend nights in foxholes in a foreign land. Shivering cold, no food, maybe questionable water. I have not had to do that. Millions of others have. To those people, I salute them. I can't imagine some of the atrocities they've had to witness while they're off in a foreign land defending our Constitution and defending our way of life. A veteran, ladies and gentlemen, is somebody that stands between you and somebody that would do you harm, your family, and that would violate everything that this country stands for. It will violate your freedoms and your very way of life. That is what a veteran is. 
He's a brave, courageous person. He doesn't sit and think, oh geez, I might break a nail or I might get hurt. They don't think about that. They think, this is the job. I'm going to make sure that my family, friends, and loved ones are safe at night. I'm going to make sure that I ensure my way of life that will defend my constitution, and that's all there is to it. And if I have to die doing it, then so be it. That, to me, is a veteran. There are millions of them, untold millions, that never really got recognized either. And so that's why I'm so especially thankful that nowadays we observe veterans day. That we take a day out of our lives. Perhaps some people don't think a whole lot about it, but we take a day and stop. And we offer maybe deals, we have parades, there are concerts, there are assemblies where we can recognize our brave men and women that have served in the United States Armed Forces. So if you want to just take a minute and work with me here. All right. How many of you out there, I'm going to ask you to stand by the way. All right. How many, of you, how many of you out there have a direct family member of some sort that is serving or has served in the United States military? Stand up. Good Lord. Look at that. Wow, I didn't expect that many, I'll tell you. <laughs> Congratulations. You know a hero. You are directly connected to a hero. Now, stay there. How many of you have a friend? Family member, friend of the family that's serving? Stand on up. We're getting there. All right, how many of you know of somebody or have ever seen a military member and keep in mind, there's a military member who's talking to you right now. The rest of you stand on up. I think we got about everybody, don't we? Well, how about it? Let's give those folks a hand, shall we? Shy, they may not want to go 